We're in Red Square and on our way to a secret meeting to buy plutonium to make a nuclear bomb. If the Cook Report can make a nuclear bomb in a briefcase, why can't terrorists do the same? What price would the pure plutonium be? The afternoon plane from the east brings in a smuggler in nuclear materials. He's a former member of the East German Secret Service, now a dealer in rare metals, keen to prove he can supply illegal nuclear materials. In a deserted car park, he's about to make a prearranged drop. It's a sample of highly enriched uranium. This is the nuclear black market at work. Here we are, the apocryphal bomb on your kitchen table. That's realistic. In fact, very realistic. The World Trade Center, New York. Scene of the worst terrorist incident so far this year. A conventional car bomb was detonated in the basement of the world's tallest office block. But what if the terrorist responsible had used a nuclear weapon? If this were at the World Trade Center, uh, we would have skyscrapers with floors collapsing in on themselves. We would have heat close to the temperature of the surface of the sun. Uh, people would vaporize close in within a quarter to a half mile or so. And we are talking about one of the most densely populated areas of Manhattan. He talked of tens of thousands of deaths, some immediate and many more in the future. There will be tens, millions of particles of radioactive plutonium. And that is one of the most lethal and toxic materials known to man. A microgram, a speck, if inhaled, is lethal. That day at Hiroshima, 80,000 died. In the 50 years since, the superpowers have tried to keep the nuclear threat Ladies under and lock and key. The President of the United States and the General Secretary of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union. But then the Cold War ended, and with it, the iron grip of communism. Capitalism, Russian style, now means that almost anything goes, including dangerous nuclear materials. The system is so corrupt and so collapsed, what I suggest you do is actually go there with a fistful of dollars and see what you can purchase. But even with that advice, we still wanted to reassure ourselves that the idea of a nuclear bomb in terrorist hands wasn't scaremongering. Not at all, according to the man who ferreted out Saddam Hussein's nuclear secrets for the United Nations, David Kay. It is a very gloomy picture, and it's going to get gloomier unless governments act now as opposed to waiting till we have the first fission cloud over a Western or Russian city. The same day, the City of London police were introducing, for the first time, Belfast-type road checks guard against yet more bombs being planted by terrorists. If you're talking about a primitive nuclear device, it's certainly well within the capability of terrorist groups of a size of 10 to 25. It won't be a perfect one, and it won't work as well as a well-designed bomb would work, but it will give you at least a kiloton of explosive power, and that's a lot. The Hiroshima bomb was 10 times more powerful. 
but even a tenth of this destructive power is beyond comprehension. The plans for the Cook Report briefcase bomb were ready and the technicians set to work. Details were checked by a nuclear scientist. At the heart of the device, the chamber where two plutonium bullets would collide within a ring of plutonium. It's a small, crude version of Big Brother. Inside this storeroom, millions of pounds worth of legal nuclear material. The licensed German dealer believes illegal plutonium has now reached the Russian black market. Tell the right man what you want. Give him proof that you have the purchasing power. Then you'll be shown the sample. To get it analyzed to make sure it's not a hoax and then you can arrange delivery and we soon established that nuclear materials are already being smuggled out of the former soviet union and into germany and in this case frankfurt railway station the drunk in the corner doesn't care but there's a high level of gamma radiation coming from locker 579 Amazingly, this is the 160th seizure of nuclear material in the past year. Out go the emergency signals. If this had been plutonium, it would not have registered on a standard Geiger counter. Plutonium doesn't emit gamma radiation. Needed for a bomb like ours, it would be much harder for the police to detect. So in a terrorist sense, this is a no-lose weapon. No matter what happens to it, it's still terrifyingly dangerous it's terrifyingly dangerous because if it goes off if it, if it goes off correctly it's uh, hideously dangerous if it fails to go off but goes off in a partial sense then you have a tremendous cleanup problem and a very large consequence in terms of long-term health loss and of course if it doesn't go off at all it's a, a, quite frankly a bomb disposal expert coming across this well i don't think he'd know what to do Plutonium under high security escort in Britain, constantly guarded. Whereas in Russia, the vast stockpiles of nuclear material are largely unmonitored. April this year, and the first clue that weapons grade plutonium is on offer illegally. Yeah. The trail that began with this man dropping enriched uranium led to a full alert for the German police. Plutonium. The plutonium will be exchanged for the money at 2.15, at this crossing in the park. But there's little or no publicity. Well, it's a political question. The authorities want to make the population believe our life is very peaceful and with no threat of nuclear terrorism. No peace in the park. The smugglers were quickly caught, but without plutonium. The police were expecting a large haul. According to the specifications which came with the offer, it would have been pure weapon material. It would have been enough to make two or three nuclear bombs. But tests would prove this was enriched uranium from the east. Still dangerous, but in this case, unlike plutonium, unsuitable for making a compact nuclear weapon. So we went shopping in Moscow, black market style. Secret meetings, middlemen, evidence that the men in the business of stealing and selling nuclear materials take no chances. Russia today is an increasingly lawless society. There's a very complicated process of democratization going on. Many people don't yet understand democracy. They think it means you can do anything you want beyond the bounds of the law. In Moscow, as the police went on an anti-mafia raid, we were making our own contacts. Organized crime now controls the black market at all levels, and that, we believe, includes plutonium. 
back home, the components of the replica bomb were ready. Assemble this, what a terrorist, a sensible terrorist would do, would be to assemble the stable parts that are unlikely to blow his face off, and then put in the sensitive parts as a last measure. The obviously the stable parts are the battery system and the timing system. Then we put in the little booster here that starts the nuclear sequence off. Then the device itself, pre-assembled with the caps on, a little bit of assembly going on, but essentially this would be a pre-assembled device with all the plutonium, the fissile materials, actually locked into it. In Moscow, we were now in touch with a man known only as Gennady. He was said to have weapons-grade plutonium for sale. Gennady and his partner Ilya certainly looked like no-nonsense characters. Posing as arms dealers ourselves, we were to have two meetings with Gennady, each lasting an hour. Although the material as analyzed is not quite what we expected it to be, do you speak English? No. Yes. We began by trying to shake Gennady's confidence. We have made some calls and we could have a buyer for 25 kilos. Each briefcase bomb would take five or so kilos of plutonium, so that's four or five bombs. That's of, of plutonium-239. What price would the pure plutonium be? Gennady was in constant contact with the man he said held his stolen stocks. He said the plutonium would be $15 million per kilo. He claimed most of his nuclear materials came from Russia's closed nuclear cities, but the plutonium would come from army generals. I'm meeting some guys at the moment. They're complaining. They've had people kept waiting. If we screw up on the second batch, we'll have to pay up for the first. Well, get on with it if you have to. You've got a tool to hand, a lever you can use, to make sure the blokes are where they're supposed to be. Right. I don't bother. Let them just winkle out 25 kilos for me. Through an interpreter, his conversation was cautious, but he told us he could deliver 25 kilograms of pure plutonium in 10 days. It was a 200 million pound deal. If, however, we would accept a uranium-plutonium mix, we could have immediate delivery. Everything Gennady told us was checked and double-checked. We're inside one of the laboratories of the Moscow Center for Radioactive Pollution Control. It's an independent, government-certified organization where the samples provided by Gennady came for analysis. They all tested positive. They were all the genuine, highly radioactive article. So is the material that we were offered and had tested in Moscow the right material for, for this nasty job? Oh, the material that the laboratory in Moscow specified contains these, the material to make up these components. All the, all the terrorists would have to do is split down the plutonium-239 from the other materials that he doesn't need. And that's not difficult. That could be done in a reasonably equipped garage, quite frankly, or a kitchen like this. So very certainly, you could make these components with, uh, once you have that proliferation material. <laughs> Next stop, the Atomic Energy Ministry in Moscow. All these materials, like plutonium, are under strict control. I'm shocked, and I am surprised. It's particularly important with plutonium that it cannot possibly fall into the wrong hands, into the hands of dishonest people who might make weapons with it. 
you more. But I must make it clear, the, the precautions haven't worked because we have been offered this stuff and these are analysis of actual samples. It's out of the system. It was offered to us. We could buy it if we wanted to. What can I say? We must look at this and check all the channels again and again so that such a thing does not happen again. But it had happened. We promised him more details and returned to Gennady's flat in a Moscow suburb. We didn't have the 200 million pounds with us, but we did have the plans Gennady wanted. A design for the special transit containers to carry the Cook Report plutonium out of Russia. Looking for Gennady. Gennady, how do you do? I bring you the, uh, the drawing. To get our plutonium out, Gennady suggested his tried and trusted route via Vilnius in Lithuania. Okay, so what size is that? Gennady then said he could supply a proper container of his own if we took all the plutonium in one large shipment. He gave us his real name, Gennady Semenov, and his account number for payment at a bank in Finland. Before we left, there was one last surprise. Would you be interested in plutonium in the form of what? SS-20. Mm -hmm. SS-20. The SS-20 is a ballistic missile. I should think so. As he said, why buy the materials to make a weapon when he could sell us one complete? And where are they available to see? But he did have a uranium plutonium mix under the stairs. He bought it out in its lead container in a plastic shopping bag. And as Gennady concluded, he could keep the supply going as long as we could keep the money yes. going. Yep. We'll go and make some calls. We will... Um... It's very heavy. There was more to tell the man from the Ministry of Atomic Energy, and he'd volunteered to give us a progress report. What have you discovered since you've had the paperwork properly looked at by your scientists? We're working on this. We are trying to find out where the material really could have come from. If the material described as containing plutonium is really of such composition, it is very dangerous. Plutonium of the 240 range is an extremely active neutron reactant. So, Doctor, thank you very much. And so, all it needed was the money, and 200 million pounds worth of weapons-grade plutonium could have gone to terrorists in the West. He would then near to the site, plug in the various electronics. This one here, put this one in, which is very difficult to do, but I'll stick it in there. Put it on the site, set a timer on this, or whatever device he wants to use, and the final thing, plug in the battery like this, and walk away. Birmingham, last October. The European summit, and an ideal target for a terrorist with a nuclear briefcase bomb. But what would happen if such a bomb went off? The power of our device would vaporize everything within a quarter of a mile and kill every living thing within a mile. That's if there was nuclear fusion. But there's another frightening scenario. So it doesn't go off at all, but just the conventional explosives go off. Those conventional explosives are enough to shatter the weapon case, certainly shatter the briefcase. But most importantly, set fire to the plutonium. So you then spread the plutonium as an aerosol 
over the area, the urban centre, where this is, and that will cause havoc in the long term over the next two, three, ten, twenty, hundred. So, will it happen? Probably, says Eric Alley, a former senior civil defence consultant to the Home Office and the United Nations. Time and time again, in, in my experience, I always said that we should, as part of our planning, uh, develop a nuclear terrorism scenario, the, the nuclear threat, the nuclear terrorism threat. Uh, and it's always been poo-pooed, it's always been thrown to court. No, that's, that's not necessary. Worry about floods or trees falling down or whatever, but don't worry about the nuclear threat. Uh, it's not going to happen, but it is going to happen sooner or later. Eric Alley designed nuclear bunkers like this. This was to have been a command post in the event of nuclear war. Now it's been decommissioned by the government. An EEC survey shows Britain has the weakest civil defence emergency system in the whole of Europe. Good afternoon, sir. Afternoon. We wanted to test reaction in America to a terrorist nuclear bomb and went through Heathrow with the blessing of the authorities. Watching the men with the machine guns. Airports are another favorite target for terrorists. Replica or not, the airline still insisted on full security precautions. Uh, uh, what exactly is this? In New York, our story was news. A British TV reporter says he was offered 55 pounds of weapons-grade plutonium by a dealer in Moscow who gave him a sample that proved to be the real thing. That's enough for four nuclear bombs. The scary deal caught on video did not go through. However, neither the police, nor the FBI, nor the New York City authorities would even contemplate discussing the threat of terrorists with nuclear bombs. As far as they're publicly concerned, it's unthinkable. But we did meet Bob Cooperman, whose job it is to think the unthinkable. Well, that's a scale model of the type of weapon we are told we could have built with the materials we were offered in Russia. My God, it's a gun-type weapon. Uh, uh, no one knows more than Dr. Cooperman about nuclear weaponry and terrorism. The fissile material. Uh, you know, I think my worst fears, uh, certainly from the days that I was in the White House and the days that I was uh, chief scientist of the U.S. arms control efforts, um, and now that I'm involved with counterterrorism for the past decade or more, uh, my worst fears are coming true. This Russian child is already a victim of radiation poisoning. She and many children like her were born disabled or blind because their parents were exposed to radiation in nuclear accidents years ago. In Moscow, the new offer for sale of weapons-grade plutonium was front-page news in Izvestia. On Tuesday, the British television company Central intends to drop a bombshell. The Germans, with 160 seizures of nuclear material in the last year, remember, take this threat very seriously. But they admit that as long as the Russians fail to control nuclear material at source, their job is next to impossible. In London, former UN nuclear monitor David Kay agrees. Our bet is that within five years, we will have a terrorist threat that we will not be able to prove is a hoax. And in many ways, that's a, for a terrorist is best. You don't have to explode the bomb. You only have to be able to show that it's likely incredible. And within 10 years, and probably less, I would say, we will have an actual device go off. The IRA's conventional bombs have forced the police to throw a ring of steel round the city of London's famous Square Mile. But a nuclear briefcase which slipped through that ring of steel could obliterate everything and everyone within it.